Hello everyone, this is You've Got 5 Options, a radio show where we prove that 5 is a magic number. Our experts will give you 5 tips on how to make your private or professional life better. We will solve your life challenge by giving you 5 different options to choose from. And our guests will answer 5 exciting questions while live on air. Tune in and feel the magic of 5. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and this is You've Got 5 Options show. Yes, and we are back again with a very new episode and it's an absolutely wonderful episode to start 2019 with because this episode might actually inspire some of people who have big dreams of becoming a writers like some of us sitting here and I will not point fingers because it's stupid when you point fingers on yourself. Maybe it will inspire some people to actually pick up writing and try to publish a book because to Today in the studio we have wonderful Ulrika, who is also known. What's your pen name, Ulrika? Yeah, so my pen name is Louisa Sherman. Louisa Sherman, mm -hmm. and I think you also go uh, <coughs> under writer L. Sherman, Sherman, right? Yeah. And we will give Ulrika a proper chance to introduce herself mm -hmm. and tell her story. So, mm -hmm. hello, Ulrika. Hello. Hello. Uh, should I call you Louisa or Ulrika for the interview? It's up to you. It's up to me. Yeah. Marta, what do you think? Well, um, I've met Ulrika before, so if it's okay to call by the uh, real name, I would go with the... You will go with the real name. Yeah. Louisa okay. is my middle name, so it's not a... But for everyone who is listening, mm -hmm. in the very beautiful 2019, I hope that you will listen to this episode and you will become a professional published writer like Ulrika is. So, Ulrika is... Uh, and please tell me if I got this all mm -hmm. correct. You are based now in Aarhus. Yes. And you are actually a Dane. Yes. Yes. And you have published your first book, Cooper's Craving, mm -hmm. this year, 2018. Yeah, in October. Perfect. And yep. that is the first installment in your female addiction series. Yes. Sounds, Marta, so far so good. Female addiction. Huh? Sounds mm -hmm. kinky. Sounds, Sounds good. Kinky. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds kinky. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, female addiction series mm -hmm. is where we meet well-educated, feisty leading ladies and the men who fall desperately in love with them. The setting is almost always corporate, but we never close the door to the bedroom. How boring would that be? Common for the series is that not everyone knows what the best for them is, and sometimes the journey towards love is a bumpy ride. Oh, how real, Urlika, by mm -hmm. the way. A happy ever after is guaranteed, though, because uh, Urlika, or actually Louisa Sherman, mm -hmm. wants to leave you with a good feeling, but panting for more. And there will be much more. So, Urlika, Female Addiction Series yeah. and Cooper's Craving was yeah. your first book. Yeah. Next one is coming actually in a couple of days, 19, yeah, 19 of, December. of December. That's Michael Smore. Mm -hmm. And you have two more prepared for uh, 2019, and that's Corey's Crash and mm -hmm. Grayson's Game. Mm -hmm. There is something interesting about these titles, but we will get back in Can't a wait. moment. Yeah. But first, I would like to ask you a question that we usually ask our guests. What did you want it to be when you grow up? Oh, that's such a difficult question. Who I wanted to be like mm -hmm. a person or just like uh, uh, I what think I wanted career to do career-wise? Mm -hmm. Something with languages and something with writing. Okay. I actually thought I was going to be a journalist. Uh, my mom is was a journalist for 40 years before she retired. But back then I was kind of, you know, balancing between languages and journalism. I chose the language way. So I have a degree, a master's degree in French and Spanish. Sweet. Gee. Whoa. Yeah. Nice. So, so that's the path I chose for me. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be a simultaneous uh, translator interpreter. Okay, the EU. but writer as a writer was mm. not necessarily uh, that idea you had. It was more journalism. I think just writing in general, because mm -hmm. that's also what I do a lot today with um, the businesses that, you know, I work for with communication and things. So it's just like generally storytelling and writing. I grew up, you know, with so many stories in my head, but I think I just put it aside for so many years because then you go to university, then you graduate, then you have your first job and then... 
everything is kind of rolling and you kind of forget that it's an option to do some of the things that you're passionate about when you're younger. I also paint, so it's kind of, you know, have a creative side that is very huge in me that I put aside for many years. Okay, so mm -hmm. actually I, I do have to say that mm -hmm. I see that quite a lot with our guests, especially the ones that are, let's say, over 30, because we mm -hmm. also have those young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who are actually going for it straight away. But I actually, we had a couple of guests who were coming back to their passions or the things that yeah. they really love to yeah. do and uh, many times the answer is in a childhood yeah. so now when i see that you actually uh, were always into writing mm. then we can definitely uh, see that that was your passion right you would say that absolutely and i think i it's no secret i'm 41 turning 42 in march and i turned my life around last year from a long korean corporate and decided to do more things with passion, more things, have more freedom to do the things that I actually like. You know, once you've had work for many years, you figure out you're good at a lot of things, but they might not motivate you or give you energy. So how could you actually build a life where you get energy and are motivated by the things that you do? So you don't go to work for 40, 50, 60 hours a week doing things that you're good at but drains you from energy. So I turned that around. And then what I did, that's the link to the childhood, is that when you look at your 15, 16 year old self, what were you crazy passionate about doing back then? Because that was a time in your life when you were being formed as a human being, where your childhood, your passions, your subject matters at school, you know, what really meant something to you. So, but Ulrika, you mm -hmm. mentioned that you started, you had a lot of stories since you were uh, young. So when did you actually start to write? When I recall, it's something that you suppress for many years. And then when you try to look back, I would be, you know, at home Saturday night, and then I would just be writing on a notepad. I even remember one time I went back home from my friend's place and everybody was still having a you know, having fun. And then I just went back to sit home alone on my couch and just write a story. And the thing is that I didn't keep those stories. You didn't? No, I should have. But okay. a lot of them are in my head still. Okay. So I think that's just the way it is that I'm visual. So I visualize the stories. And then when I write one story, another story pops up. So there are spin-off stories everywhere in my stories. So we can also talk about that. So the female addiction will not stop at four books. It, it will won't. continue. It will it continue. continue. Mm -hmm. Actually, I wanted to tie a little bit uh, back to the fact, you know, when you're 15 and 16, mm -hmm. you don't have all the, what you're going to be when you grow up. It's starting around that time, mm -hmm. right? 15, yeah. 16, you're going to go to high school. What type of, you know, education are you going to choose afterwards? So you are free of um, all those demands that come from yeah. outside. And another thing that I experienced afterwards was that when people that you have worked with, they see you as one person. And they're like, oh, so you're also doing this? Oh, you're also doing that? But then when you meet people who actually knew you back then, they're not surprised. Because uh -huh. they knew you for, yeah. for that type of person or for also knowing doing, you know, those sort of things. I, That's so interesting. I, I when I meet people yeah. from my grammar school and from my you know, high school, they're not surprised at all. Yeah, I, I totally agree because mm. I actually would say that most of my friends from primary school mm. and from high mm. school would assume I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and this is not mm. something I, I have been pursuing professionally mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. You are so right. Mm. That, that, that actually was, a, I'm sorry that I sound like, oh my God, something has fall on my head, you know, big mm -hmm. epiphany. But this mm. is actually so true. People from the past wouldn't be surprised about, mm -hmm. uh, about mm -hmm. the fact that I would be writing and mm. maybe people who I know right now would be in some, let's say, sense, yeah. right? But uh, Ulrika, then mm -hmm. I would like to ask you a question mm -hmm. before we will dig mm -hmm. more into your um, story of how actually you started to write now uh, and not right now, right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, I know. My English, uh, spoken no, English needs, needs a little bit of polishing and that, no. that, that doesn't mean that we need to make it more Polish. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm in a funny mood today. Okay, but that's normal in mm -hmm. our studio. Mm -hmm. So um, please tell me what you have been doing before you started to write, before Cooper's uh, craving. Yeah. You actually had a uh, career mm -hmm. in a corporate world. Mm -hmm. So please tell us a little bit about this transition from corporate world into a 
female addiction service writer. Yep, last year in September, I started my own business, a consultancy company within mm -hmm. HR and communication. Before that, I worked in corporate America, but in Danish, you know, based companies, but they were owned by American companies uh, since I graduated in 2001. So I have a career working, you know, up the corporate ladder for many years and the past years as an HR manager, HR director. And uh, I loved it. I love working with people. I love, you know, motivating and developing people. I love hiring people, finding the right matches for the companies. What I don't like so much is the whole reporting structure that you find in large companies. So a lot of my, spa, uh, my time towards the end was spent on filling in spreadsheets with numbers and turning them into corporate so that they could control that I'd actually done my work, that I'd hired the people mm -hmm. I said I was going to hire, that I hadn't overspent my budget. I had a role, an HR director role with a company called Carrier, but just a small branch here in Denmark and a small branch in Sweden. So I divided my time between Aarhus and Sweden. So I was sitting in my office in um, Gothenburg, looking into my laptop, filling in a spreadsheet or updating some kind of system and thinking, there has got to be more to life than this. I'm into meeting people. I'm into talking and, again, building stories and doing things. I'm not into sitting in front of a computer and filling in information. So we had talked a little bit about it at home because it turned out, you know, that I needed to do something. So we had talked about it at home. So I called my husband from Sweden and said, it's now. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do this anymore. I will resign and uh, open my own business. And he knew that I'd had it because we had talked about it for a while. And his only comment was actually at that point, before that we had more discussions about it, he said, okay, so once you come home, we will open a spreadsheet <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll look at the budget. How are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. Like a family, because we were, you know, used to two incomes and we have a house, we have cars, we have kids and, um, you know, How can we do that? And then what will it look like? So I handed in my resignation and I had a three month notice period, which is normal when you have like a senior position. So I did have some time to start building up my business. Mm -hmm. That's a quite an amazing story, especially with this moment, <coughs> because I've heard that moment of realization. There's mm -hmm. got to be more to life. Mm -hmm. And I actually have lately read somewhere that one of the, in my opinion, uh, corporations are actually inherently in efficiency hubs mm -hmm. because most of the time you spend on reporting mm -hmm. on how you have created value instead of creating value itself. We can make a TV show about that. I can I, talk to that for ages. Yeah. Because but <laughs> I think a lot of it, it's not going to be the topic today. We'll do yeah. something more interesting, right? Yes, yeah. I, I think we yeah. definitely should because... Uh, <clears throat> and then you, you actually find yourself uh, in a position because the funny thing is you you, you mentioned that what you were doing, mm. you know, you were working with people, mm. you loved it, mm -hmm. but, uh, but y you have noticed that the value that you could have... Mm. Um, produced or people you could have helped or meet that time was actually taken away by by the administrative tasks yeah. and i think that this is one of those things that really uh, uh, drives away from corporations even the most in love in their job people yeah yeah so people if they ask from the outside and in they would probably say that i was good at my job mm -hmm. and uh, that they like me as an hr manager but i didn't like my job and i didn't think that i was good at it anymore because I, you know, it drained me from energy. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I didn't feel that I was contributing in the way that I knew that I could contribute. So I was, you know, I ha I was having the, you know, inner storm or, yeah. Yeah, this is how yeah. it goes. But Ulrika, you, mm -hmm. you have uh, quit your corporate job. Yeah. Uh, by the way, applaud for that. Uh, and I sit with two ladies who have done that now because Marta also mm -hmm. have just done it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you decided to open your own business, mm -hmm. but that own business was not writing uh, nope. books. No, nope. that so, was on the side. Exactly. So how this all kind of blossomed? Because I would assume mm -hmm. 
And knowing from from my own mm-hmm. experience when I'm start, mm-hmm. trying to start a business, it's like you are many times 100% with your thoughts and energy and time into your business. Mm-hmm. So then I'm thinking, how on earth did you manage to start to write books in the same time? It kind of snuck up on me because I was putting a lot of effort into meeting with people, having coffee meetings, uh, talking to my network, being out there and putting myself out there. And that's also draining. I am an extrovert, but I'm not like an extreme extrovert. So I can put myself out there, but then I need to have some energy with myself and to to sit down. Another thing is that you are not in control of when that business will come. You're not in control of what when people will buy you and um, if they will believe in you. So the writing part was something that I could control. And to begin with, I actually thought I was going to write like a book on HR and motivation and energy. And I did start the outline. I remember sitting down at, at street food, you know, with my computer and had have everything outlined and started writing the first pages and then I was like yeah but you're still stuck in the same world and you're doing what you're doing every day because I was putting my energy 100% into pursuing the business part and talking to to companies so I need something else and that's when uh, Cooper just jumped into my head so I sat down in my office I have a home office and started writing in the afternoon back home from a coffee meeting or following up on something and then I just started writing and uh, it just poured out of my fingers. When you write, you probably know that. Yeah. So when you're in flow, it just comes. It just and then when you write the story and that's what happens still to me is that then the new scenes, the new plotted scenes that just jump into my head. So I know exactly what the next scene is going to be. Sometimes I even know like 10 scenes from the scene that I'm writing, what is going to happen, even though I may not know you know, the steps in between. But I know that I need to have that scene and I know I need to have that scene. So almost always I will have the flow of the entire story in my head. So I think I wrote the first book, started last November, and I was finished before Christmas. Whoa, because so, that was one of my questions. Yeah. How long did it take yeah. you to, so to write a book? if I don't have that much work to do, and mm-hmm. right now I have a lot to do on the side, I can write the book, you know, the length that I the books are uh, in like a month and a half, okay. I would say, yeah. And how uh, how long are the books? So they are around, I don't know, in 40,000 words, if it says something to mm-hmm. people who are writing. And I think the length is okay to the type of book that I'm writing. Yeah. Uh, then I'd prefer to write another story where mm-hmm. you will get a peek into what happened to the characters that you've already met to start a new story. So that's approximately the length okay. that I'm writing. I, I think uh, it, it's absolutely impressive. Mm. Uh, one month and a half uh, for a book, it's really impressive. I think you are really in a flow when you are writing it because it, it's like almost yeah. a download of yeah, something it that's is, in you. It is, it is. And that's why, you know, sometimes my daily life today can interfere a lot with, you know, I want to download. So that was yeah. a good <laughs> that was a that good, was uh, a good term actually to, to use because I, I'm, I have it in my head mm-hmm. and now I need to... Just download to it. download it, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, Ulrika, mm-hmm. we actually got mm-hmm. a question from mm-hmm. one of our mm-hmm. listeners that is, of course, for you. Yeah. And the question was, why did you choose this specific genre? Because female addiction series mm-hmm. is how would you call this genre? It's a um, it's new romance or contemporary romance. I would say it's the way that romance is being written today. Mm-hmm. You know, where you get a little bit more explicit scenes than if you you know, read Pride and Prejudice and romance books from, you know, another century. That's, so not, it's the, that's not that. It's, uh, you know, the way romance is being written today. So mm-hmm. you have like romantic relationships building on a story and mm-hmm. uh, and then you have the sex scenes. So of course. So yeah, that's okay. the, you don't close the door to the bedroom. Okay, that's yeah. uh, that's actually yeah. something from your website which I really liked. Mm-hmm. Uh, so why exactly this genre? I think it's like when you watch a good series on Netflix or wherever you watch it, where you just want to be entertained. You come home from um, a long day at work, and you want to sit down and you want to chill, and you might not want to overthink what you know what you're watching like a good chick flick movie yeah. and uh, i have the same feeling when i write mm-hmm. so so it's the fun part it's building the dialogue it's uh, building the the story between the the main characters the side characters and things like that so it's so for me it's relaxing writing this type of um, genre and i think that it talks and speaks to a lot of women today because i can see there's so many books out there 
Uh, that's another thing when you are published, you know. Uh, yeah. So many books. Um, you suddenly see romance. so many books, yeah. right? Uh, in the same genre. So I think it uh, talks to the busy career woman, mom that just wants to relax and mm -hmm. maybe have a fun, easy read when she hits the pillow at night. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was the same thing writing and still is. So sticking to that, where it's not, you know, it's not too heavy, it's not too heavy on the research side. It's uh, fun to write. I do research a lot on the places where the locations and when I travel, I pick up new locations where stories can take place. I just recently went to New York and the first series is set in New York. But we do travel to San Francisco, to San Diego, to other places mm -hmm. where I've been. I've lived in Seattle. So another new series will go to Seattle and we will travel in the books also. That's a big part of what I'm writing. Okay, that yeah. that's actually sounds fantastic. Mm. Before we will get to your first step, I will have a five very, very brief questions for you. Mm. We have actually a multiple choice, yeah. uh, some of them, but uh, those will be rather brief questions. Mm. And uh, we will start with this one. So uh, books, mm. printed, ebook or audiobook? Uh, ebook. Ebook mm. for you mm -hmm. always ebook always. So you uh, but uh, do you read the traditional printed books? Uh, not so much anymore. I download them to my iPad, mm -hmm. and then I can have so many titles. I've you know I've read many books in my life, and I could never bring enough books when went on vacation That's when true. I was younger. So I love the fact that now I can just bring whatever I want to bring, and then I can download yeah, Marta, whatever I want to read. What about you, Marta? Definitely hardcover, mm -hmm. but for vacation it is the mm -hmm. Kindle. So I have noticed that once uh, trying to be good at packing for vacation, trying to bring five big mm. books uh, was not making it that easy. And so it is okay for me to use Kindle, but definitely I prefer much more the hardcover also because I spend so many hours in front of screen. Mm. So for me, if I take an iPad, mm. I, I don't feel that this is the, you know, like the relax. It helps a little bit with Kindle. It mm. looks more like a book, mm. but no, if, if it is for relaxing, I, I love to feel the pages mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I actually am also a sucker for printed books, but uh, I'm also sometimes very stubborn in my old ways. Next question, Orlika. I write because it heals me. It allows me to escape the reality. It allows me to create a reality. Or I don't know why. I just feel the urge to do it. If you would have to pick something, what would you pick? Or is it a hybrid answer? I, I would say maybe a hybrid answer of all of them. Mm -hmm. Because I would say the urge is so big, so I will go with that, that one if I have to pick yeah. one. But it's definitely a mixture mm -hmm. where I said, you know, the healing part was, you know, can't control everything, but this you can control. I'm very creative in, in what I do. So this is a creative side of me as well. But okay. yeah, the urge. So you yeah. would say that it's the urge, but it actually has all yeah. the elements. Yeah. I think for many writers, mm -hmm. it does. And actually, uh, coming back to what you have said, I read on your webpage when you mm -hmm. wrote that, uh, for me, it's pretty normal to throw myself into something I can control when everything is a storm around mm -hmm. me. I could control my writing and my characters, mm -hmm. whereas I couldn't control other people people willingness mm. to purchase my company's services. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a world that you create and have a control. And I think many writers love that actually, mm -hmm. because we create and uh, we do have a control over something, right? Yeah. Next question, Orlika, mm -hmm. is that you have mentioned that your book's main characters are feisty, well-educated mm -hmm. women. However, all the titles of your books, mm -hmm. I think they have a guy's name mm -hmm. in a title. Mm -hmm. uh, is it on purpose? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where should I start? The books are written from both perspectives. So when you read uh, the books, you will get both the leading lady and yeah and the, the man guy. yeah and the man in the book so you'll get both perspectives but i'm leaning towards building you know the strong uh, female characters in the books with everything that comes along because sometimes you do have hang-ups and things that are not going so easy for you in your life so i build the books around the female but you will get a male character also that you can relate to so it not it's not only written and narrated from uh, the leading lady feasty ladies because i'm deep down i'm a feminist mm -hmm. i you know i i believe in equal choices i've been in corporate for so many years and i've seen so many things that again we can do another episode on that yeah and i think it's so important to stand up for yourself and believe in yourself and uh, believe that 
regardless of whatever people will tell you, you can do it. So those are the characters that I built that they are, yeah. Okay, and is it also a coincidence that it's Cooper's craving CC, yeah. Michael's more uh, MM, Corey's crash mm -hmm. CC, Grayson's game GG? No, it's not a coincidence. It's not That's a on coinc purpose. That's, That's on, purpose. on purpose. So it's a female addiction because they're addicted to the females. And then mm -hmm. it's the, you know, you have the man. And so Cooper's craving her mm -hmm. uh, Indian book one Michael's more he wants his more with Louisa yeah. and uh, Corey's crest he's gonna crash big time you're gonna love that book <laughs> it's it's done already so it's, it's in, already. in the yeah it's in mm -hmm. the editing phase it'll be published in um, March mm -hmm. and then uh, the next one is uh, a game between two lovers who will not tell each other how they feel how they feel the truth about who they are and then It will be a game until it's not a game. Okay, yeah. which sounds quite dangerous, but this is yeah. how it is with the love lives, yeah. I think, yeah. and romance. Yeah. Last question mm -hmm. uh, before we get to the steps, and that is because you have mentioned that the setting of your novels, mm -hmm. and we talked about mm -hmm. it a couple of times, mm -hmm. all, almost always corporate. Yeah. And you have spent yourself a lot of mm -hmm. years, as we know, in mm -hmm. a corporate setup. Mm -hmm. So in your first novel, Cooper's Craving, mm -hmm. the story is about a romance between employer and an employee. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I have to ask, is it something that you have experienced or you have seen or the inspiration just came out of nowhere? Pure fiction. Pure Unfortunately, fiction. I've had a very boring corporate life. I've been with my husband since we were 18, 19. Okay. So I'm living a very domestic <laughs> married life. So it's a pure fiction, but of course it's uh, taken from some of the stories that I've seen around me and then you build on them and you develop the characters and you match, you know, people that you might have thought that could have been matched up okay. in the books. So of course I take people that I've met and situations that I've seen and then I build characters on it, but a lot of it is just fiction. I want to build that person who's going to do that and then he's going to be like this and then she's going to react like that. So that's how I do it. We are not disappointed. No. No, because I have to say that, you know, it's it's a difficult situation between employer and employee. I actually have witnessed situation mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. uh, in, in a corporation when I was working. And now they are, of course, happily together, mm -hmm. have children. Mm -hmm. But I know it was a quite, it's difficult. But it's not uncommon. It's I think, you know, uncommon. you spend so many time, it's so many hours a day mm -hmm. uh, at your work. So if you're not going to meet that special person at work, work you know then are you just going to meet him her at gym or at the grocery store on tinder today but you know mm -hmm. obviously when you work and you are with people for many hours a day things will happen because it's chemistry between people and we are built to fall in love that's um, that's correct and actually uh, you know when we are younger we usually have high school sweethearts mm -hmm. when we are studying mm -hmm. we usually meet someone at university so if we are still single or just again single and mm -hmm. we are at the workplace it's not a big surprise especially mm -hmm. if it's a corporate setting mm -hmm. when you have so many people to actually find a partner or a boyfriend there. I think we are actually almost at the end of the first oh, episode because yeah. we had a fantastic mm -hmm. conversation. <laughs> so I will only tease our uh, wonderful listeners what five steps for a publishing author you will give them in the next episode. And Urlika, please correct me if I am wrong. The first step is write every day. Yes. Yes. The second one, read in between. Mm -hmm. The third one, start creating a brand. Mm -hmm. Fourth one, find your own community of supporters. Yes. And the fifth one, edit, edit, edit. Yep. So Ulrika, all of those five steps sounds pretty uh, logical to me. I think mm -hmm. this is exactly how you become a published writer. And I would love to hear your entire explanation and elaboration on all those five steps in the second episode. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this one. I definitely had a lot of fun uh, listening to your story and what a story it is. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Marta, for being our wonderful, uh, yet slightly uh, silent today co-host. I think you were very much into the story. Definitely. I was listening like I could just be like the spectator. Yes, so it's silence very, spectator. Very interesting. Yes, but thank you very much. And we will talk to you in a second episode, Ulrika. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. bye.
You are listening to You've Got Five Options radio show, where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number. To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, thefiveoptions.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks!